Impeachment threat against Buhari real, says National Assembly PDP caucus. And a boy PDP battles self-inflicted crisis as 2023 polls becomes threatened. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Expectedly, mixed reactions from Nigerians, especially senators and other stakeholders, have trailed the lawmakers' threat to impeach the president, even as senators are sharply divided over the matter. It could be recalled that some senators last Wednesday stormed out of plenary in protest against Senate President Ahmed Lawan's failure to make public their resolution from a closed-door meeting where they had resolved to issue a six-week ultimatum after which they will use the impeachment notice against the president over insecurity. Attempts to raise the motion to that effect on the Senate floor by the minority leader, Senator Philip Aududa, uh, was turned down by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan earlier, now, which compelled some of these senators to stage a walkout. But the Deputy Senate President Ovio Moagege, while faulting the impeachment option, stated that communication mechanism between the National Assembly and the presidency had not been fully explored and exhausted. Well, joining us to discuss this is uh, um, Biodu Shomi. Thank you very much, Mr. Shomi, for joining us. Mr. Shomi, thank you so much for joining us. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. Um, let's take our minds back to what happened last week and the impeachment um, um, threat, apparently, from uh, especially PDP uh, members on the floor of the National Assembly who are optimistic that other members uh, of the National Assembly will be in support of this move. Um, my first question, obviously, is has there ever been uh, uh, this sort of move in the, the National Assembly in the history of Nigeria um, that was followed through to the latter for an impeachment process or protocol to even take, um, you know, root. Has this ever happened? And why now, if it has never happened, why do we think it will even ever, uh, uh, you know, be attempted? Yes, we have had the impeachment moves at state levels uh, drawn to conclusion, unlike at national level. At the national level, we have only had one such impeachment move. That was uh, when Obasanjo was in power in his first term, and um, some senators believed to be working for the vice president uh, uh, at that time, you know, made moves to actually remove him or deprive him of his second care. But that was not followed through. Unlike uh, the state's one, the first one in the state was the case of Alara Bimusa, who was removed, impeached, the governor of Kaduna State. Then you had Ladoja's case too. Ladoja was removed in Oyo State. And then Peter Obi also removed. So at the state level, we had three impeachments, you know, drawn to the conclusion following the procedures. At the federal level, we had only one such move, but ne it never materialized. Hmm. Now, um, the Benin State governor um, uh, had been lauded for, um, you know, supporting the impeachment call um, by uh, members of the National Assembly on Mr. President. In fact, young people had said that um, um, they, uh, this might waken Mr. President from his slumber. And many would ask if Mr. President really is asleep or uh, are his hands tied in, in terms of this dealing with the issue of terrorism. Now, might I remind you that this is one of the things that Mr. President had campaigned on in 2015, promising that he was going to deal with insecurity. And, and, and looking at insecurity then and now, it was not at this level, even though many, many would argue that uh, there were bombings uh, in, in um, Abuja, um, there were students that were kidnapped, etc., etc. Um, but here we are, and members of the National Assembly, be it the opposition, are saying, well, we want to make sure that Mr. President does something in six weeks, and if after six weeks expires, 
this is what we want to do. But do they have the numbers? This is another question. Well, uh, what is very clear is that those who are threatening the unity of, of this country today, creating so much insecurity of lives and property, threatening the capital city, threatening Buari itself, are in bed with our Mr. President. They are awesome. in bed with it. Uh, no, yeah, what I mean is, is that Mr. President is guilty of complicity, mute indifference, you know, or outright support for whatever is going on in the country. It is increasingly becoming difficult for anybody to think that there is no consent coming from Mr. President. Don't forget that even when the, the, when the brigades of guards were attacked, Mr. President left this country to go and lecture, uh, give a speech on security in Liberia, ignoring the fact that the speech and action should have taken place here. So it is increasingly becoming more difficult. We are beginning to believe, more and more people are beginning to believe that a script is being acted to truncate the electoral process going on in our country. Can I ask? And this, in my view, will be fiercely resisted. Can I ask? I mean, because what you just said seems to be, uh, there's a lot of speculation I sense in that statement that you've made, um, that Mr. President might be complicit. Yes. Uh, uh, he he um, has somewhat, you know, um, not necessarily given off the body language that we expect a president to give off at a time like this. But could it be because the president himself has kept mute on these issues for so long, hence the speculation? Because I'm wondering to myself, why would a, a president, a man who waited for so long to be president of this country, why he would keep quiet and watch innocent Nigerians being kidnapped, being tortured, being killed, even men of the guard that he used to be part of, which are our soldiers, our very gallant soldiers, killed at will. I'm guessing... Why would a president sit back and watch all of these things happen? Going back to the speculation that you made. Yeah, well, one thing which is very clear is the agenda being pushed by the Buari's administration. Nobody is oblivious of the fact that Mr. President went to Mali and told people, it was reported, that Nigeria is home for the Fulanis. That all Fulanis, you know, in West Africa are one. And so, therefore, they do not escape boundary. We all knew how the borders were thrown open clearly. And not only that, we knew all the efforts being made to ensure that they occupy parts of Nigeria. That started from Ruga, you know, up till Katu Colony. Up to the recent move in the National Assembly to create for the federal government to annex all the waters on the land in order to create settlement, including the banks, to create settlements. Uh, I think that. Fulanese, um, Katua. Uh, no, nobody can deny this. The is all coming together now. And People are beginning to wonder, you know, at times I wonder when people talk about the issue of Christianity or uh, Muslim, Muslim, Christian, Christian ticket. Is that the issue facing us currently or the issue of security? This is a country where Mr. President is being threatened with kidnapping. The governor of Kaduna State is being threatened with kidnapping. And we've seen them going to Abuja. Schools have been closed down and people are talking about Muslim, Muslim as if. Um, this um, terrorist trying to uh, destroy our country, he who cares about anybody's religion. We have come to a state where the primary function of government, which is security of rights and property, is no longer being governed. So within that context, one can understand the position of the National Assembly who hitherto have been very, very compliant, been useful agents for the Buhari administration to not turn around and abandon their duty post 
threatening impeachment when in reality they are actually afraid of being in Abuja for fear of being kidnapped. For Mr. President to be threatened with kidnap, and then the way they move into Kodé or Correctional Center with impunity, you know, it's baffling. It is baffling. There is no other way to explain government's complacency other than to describe it or government inaction or poor action as an attitude of passivity, of mute indifference, or sometimes of cold complicity. We have gone through this several times. We are told Tukano will do the job. We bought the Tukanos. Nothing at that point. We are moving from frying pan to fire. Wari inherited insecurity in the Northeast. That insecurity spread to Northwest. Hmm. From Northwest is coming to the center of power. At what stage will Nigerians be concerned about what is being done to our country and our country is being led by Mr. President? Let me go to the political aspect of this. Um... I know that um, the NMPP presidential candidate, um, uh, Senator Rabi Kwankwaso, has spoken on this issue of um, uh, impeachment. I'd like to quote him directly. He uh, did say that um, he warned the National Assembly on this issue, and he said that, um, I'd like to quote him, I do not know the facts that they have, talking about the members of the National Assembly, but as their former colleague, I want them to threat softly and they should not be in a hurry to rock the boat. What exactly did you think he meant? Because this has all kinds of um, political undertones and they're subject to all kinds of interpretation. What would yours be? Yes, in my own interpretation, Kwakwanzo is saying that there is an electoral process which certainly would lead to the termination of the lifetime of the Buhari regime. And therefore, there is no need to rock the boat by impeaching him now, which could create another crisis, political crisis in the country. That's basically what um, Papandu is referring to. It's referring to the electoral process. Apart from that, I don't even think they have the numbers currently to impeach Mr. President. As it stands today, I don't think they have the numbers. There are so many of the actors with their um, to this National Assembly, who in any case will frustrate it. I cannot see people like Ubi, like Atiku, like Tinubu and others who are open to have an opportunity, you know, to become the president of the country through the bad lots, will now support a move that will create a political crisis in the country. I don't think um, they will be able to do that. Now. But what I foresee is that what would actually lead to real impeachment is when a state of emergency is created in the country, when Asorok is attacked in a way that the legislators will not reasonably sit in the National Assembly again, and that will take serious you know, risk you know, of um, uh, security breakdown in the seat of um, Abuja, which is the uh, seat of power, then that probably may end up leading to impeachment. Uh, but I don't think the current threat will lead to impeachment. Uh, does he have to get to that? Because, uh, you know, it's one thing to say, well, maybe because it's heating hard or it's, it's, it's heating close to home now, and that's why members of the National Assembly seem to be acting. Um, Dumebi Kachiku, who is the presidential candidate for the ADC, uh, had called what happened on the floor of the National Assembly self-serving. He's looking at the political undertone of this. He's saying that, look, um, these men are doing this because it now affects them. What about when it was hitting other people? Uh, but I, I, I'm still asking my first question. Why do we have to wait for things to get so bad for us to finally declare a state of emergency? And when we talk about states of emergency, let's not forget that there, that means that um, all political uh, or electoral powers, one way or the other, will be jettisoned. And we're talking about um, a military takeover of sorts. You know, when we ask for a state of emergency, if we are looking at it in its entirety. No, not necessarily. It doesn't have to be to military taking over power. The state of emergency can be declared by any government or the president where there are serious 
breaches, you know, to uh, the security of lives and property. And if in their view, in line with our constitution, the Nigerian police force cannot manage it, then they are likely going to invite the military in. And that will be under a state of emergency. Otherwise, the military has no role in policing in a democracy. So, and that is the situation where um, even as many people think that these guys that are no longer bluffing, these terrorists are no longer bluffing, uh, we have seen the incapacity or uh, um, uh, uh, security forces unable to contain them. If this tendency and this trend continues, the most likely would is that if there's an attack on, with a serious attack on Asura, then that will create a serious state of uh, emergency in our country. And if that should that happen, that may also affect the political process going on, the electoral process going on in the country. And should that happen, that may governize all the politicians in the country to say, we need to find a solution to this problem. Mr. President, maybe you are the problem. Maybe you need to step aside. So that will be a formal resolution one will be. And I think that is when impeachment is likely. Uh, currently, I don't think this National Assembly can impeach the president. They are too compliant. Yeah, but I reject the point that they've not been complaining about um, threats to the rights of other people. They have been complaining about it. It means that nothing happened. And they didn't take any step to ensure that, you know, something that's the difference in the situation beyond the talk show. So because of that, you can condemn them for that. Now, the chicken has come home to us. They have now realized that they could also be victims of what many Nigerians, thousands of Nigerians have been victims of. So um, I don't necessarily believe that this impeachment threat uh, will come to fruition. I think it's just a warning. And eventually, we may not get to that point. It depends on uh, how far the terrorists can create chaos. We keep talking about solutions here. We keep saying that, oh, well, solutions have to be pro provided. I have sat through two years of speaking with different um, security operatives, security experts, and they have come up with very doable ideas and solutions that can help the insecurity in the country. But then there's always a recurrent you know, statement about the political will on the path of Mr. President. But let's not just put the president here on the chopping board. Um, of course, the government that we have, uh, it's a three-tier government. We have, of course, the executive, we have the legislature, we have the judiciary. And in terms of issues like this, the judiciary might not necessarily be called upon to, to be part of this, but the legislature and the executive have a serious role to play. And you did mention that there's, a, there's been a lot more of talk shopping uh, than getting up pushing the hand of the president. So could it be, again, that maybe because the legislature has not been taken seriously by the executive, or maybe the legislature has made itself not as serious to be taken serious by Mr. President, hence uh, the talk shopping. Again, I'm asking, um, how do we get that political will out of Mr. Uh, Mr. President, who keeps traveling out for every time if there's some hit or insecurity or kidnapping, and, and even the body language does not seemingly uh, be that of a person who is interested in what's happening. Where do you fish out the political will from that kind of person? Yeah, in relation to political will, um, I doubt whether we can bring that out of Mr. President. He has already told the whole country that he's tired, he wants to go. The question is, should he be pushed or be allowed to work in line with the electoral um, timetable? The, the, the problem of political will has something to do with his own personal relationship with the people who creating the problems in the country. Nobody can deny the fact that we know where these people are. The government cannot deny knowing where the terrorists are. We allow this thing to fester, you know, up to this point. Um, I remember clearly uh, Nasser El Rafai, in his first term, did tell the whole country that he even paid to these terrorists outside the country, you know, who are 
So who are rounding and who are plundering the resources of this country and killing our people? He openly admitted to that. So he knew where they are. We also know that the former president also had a meeting with a view to reconcile, you know, uh, uh, the, the terrorists, you know, with the Nigerian state. Uh, but again, they met somewhere. We knew that Tony also has been, had meetings with them in the past, and we know that his publicity secretary of um, Sheikh Gumi and also Gumi himself have been meeting and brokering uh, peace with these people. You know, they are fully involved in negotiations. So we cannot deny knowing where they are. That's one. Number two, when you look at the issue of um, the list of sponsors of terrorism, UAE, United Arab Emirates, came out with the list. We were told that we have over 400 uh, names of 400 people who are sponsored for sponsors of terrorism, you know, by the Attorney General of the Federation, Malami. But they could not do anything since folks were on strike at that point. The courts were not sitting at that point in time. Now, now courts resumed, nothing happened. Courts have been sitting, the 100 terrorists or sponsors of terrorism have not been arraigned in court. So there's absolutely lack of political will stemming from an attitude of passivity, mute indifference, and cold conflict. These are the facts as they stand today, in my view. Finally, before I let you go, Mr. Shomi, what is the fate of the average Nigerian? I'll ask you, I'll tell you why I'm, where I'm going with this. Recently, the uh, Honorable Minister of, of Information, Mr. Lai Mohammed, has come out to say that they will be meting out sanctions uh, to uh, Daily Trust, of course, and the BBC, which is the British Broadcasting um, Media House, uh, who put out a documentary, I'm sure that you've seen that documentary, it's out in the public space, um, talking to um, these so-called terrorists, uh, mostly those who have laid down their weapons. Also getting down to the crux of the matter, the story under this, what is causing the terrorism that we have in the country. Now, if outsiders, like you mentioned, the UAE, um, in all their, you know, uh, it, they, they were very generous to us to give us a list of people who they call sponsors of these terrorists in our country. That's the UAE. Of course, the Brits have also come up with a documentary um, telling us what is at the root of the problem and why we're facing what we're facing today. And of course, Daily Trust has brought up their own side of the story. But our government is saying that these people will be sanctioned for going to the bottom of this matter and trying to make sense of it all. Where does that leave the average Nigerian? If others, outsiders, are very interested in what is, we're dealing with, what we're suffering from, most, in, most interested than the people who call themselves our government, what does the future hold for us? Yeah, it all shows, you know, look, when I had, uh, I, I actually watched the video, and when I had the, the response of the Minister for Information, I'll let you like I laughed my head off. I laughed and laughed and said, so, why are they irritated? They've been rattled by the disclosure made by that terror, who was honored with the chief county title by the emir of his state in Nasrava, in Sanfara. Now, we all know these things. They failed to act. They failed to do anything about it. The demand in question, that terror in question, was declared wanted by the Nigerian police force. And right in the you know, nose of the Nigerian state, the same terrorist was being honored with the chief transit title. That is what Light One be addressing. How come the meet? The arrest of that man before he was given, you know, that um, uh, he should stop complaining about, you know, uh, BBC, who in any case only came to inter interrogate the man to try and find out, you know, what happened, how did he manage to get to where he, where, where he had found himself as a honorable person while a terrorist, and at the same time trying to help the Nigerian state we thorough investigation so that we understand what the problem is, why they are fighting, 
I'm going to not be able to resolve it. Is that what Mr. Naik Mohammed is complaining about? I feel sorry for this country and for the leadership of our country. Well, I want to say thank you. Be show me as a political analyst. Uh, thank you for being part of the conversation. We're hoping that something positive comes out of this. We appreciate you for being here. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be discussing the battles uh, within the PDP in a boring state. Stay with us.